dynamic work or speed work with uh, police officers um, or if I would substitute just do max effort work and hypertrophy work I would definitely do dynamic work uh, with them um, or just about anybody for that reason um, the reason is at some point or another you're gonna have to move fast so you want to be able to draw on that if you have to. Um, even if you're a 60 year old lady who's about to fall on the ice, <laughs> you're gonna have to um, you're gonna have to flex fast and move fast at some point. So yes, for for the most part, there's very few situations where I wouldn't train dynamic work. Um, because all the other areas are addressed within the system. So, and I honestly, offhand can't think of a population where I wouldn't have some dynamic work in there or speed work, uh, just for that reason, because, you know, speed work can help with, can also help with conditioning. It can also help with a little bit of hypertrophy. You know, it's going to touch on other areas, um, but it's important to to have that trait constantly trained. And then your, most of your other areas of strength can be addressed with other methods within the system. So almost every population I work with, I'm going to do some type of dynamic work. You know, and that doesn't have to be a lot. You know, it's so like for police, you know, maybe eight sets of three, five sets of five on speed bench, eight sets of two, lower body. And that's it, you know, it's not not like, uh, you know, now for them I'd probably do a little bit of med ball work, train them more like an athlete, do a little bit of med ball work, um, a few jumps here or there, jumping up onto a box, you know, maybe short sprints, stuff like that too, but you don't have to do a ton to keep the, keep your uh, traits trained, so yeah, do your speed work is looking epic thanks <laughs> gonna have to uh, gonna have to trim it here soon it's getting um, getting a little long two to three favorite dynamic movements uh, depends where you're at in the year I guess um, If I'm just in the off season, I'm gonna say speed squats, kettlebell swings, speed bench, a little bit of med ball throws, upper body. Um, box jumps, all sorts of box jump variations. Then we start getting closer to summer. Uh, get into your short sprints and stuff would start to take priority not that you take those other things out but um you 
know, you got to start sh shifting your focus once you're starting to get into uh, into your summer months. So yeah, just the basics, man. What I don't fucking like is empty fucking jammer arm. Whatever. I don't understand that. I don't understand what that's going to do for you. Um, you know, it was pretty dynamic movements for football players. I saw the other day. I thought it was a pretty cool idea. Um, I can't remember who posted it. I wish I could remember. Um, just doing lateral push-offs. Um, like going up a, a slight incline. Holding the med ball. Not that you have to hold the med ball. But I thought, you know, just pushing off sideways going up the hill was a pretty cool idea. They did like... Uh, like probably 10 push-offs to get up the little slope um, you know I thought that was a pretty good idea I thought that was cool I've actually been seeing some pretty good plyo stuff online lately um, just uh, when people I think when people keep things basic but pay attention to like the movement quality and I hate to say that because that's like a big buzzword right now. Um, but you watch watch the kids jump and they're quick off the ground and there's some spring, you know, with them popping off the ground and they land soft. Their knees aren't caving in. When I see stuff like that, it's uh, it's real good. Um, and there was uh, the guy had a had a really cool progression. He. Um, he had the kids do a drop step off a, just a, like a 12 inch step, pushed off one step laterally and then took off sprinting. Um, I thought those were pretty cool, but the, the cool thing about it was, I wish I could remember their names because they were doing a really good job. There's a couple different ones I saw. Um, so just, just simple things, but good execution of the movement is what's gonna make the most difference. Um, I think people try to get like too fancy with single leg RDL jumps and stuff like that, which aren't bad, but you see some of the stuff where I try to get too fancy and I think they lose lose sight of what's important. I would have seated box. Yeah, perfect. Yep. Keep it simple. You know, and then as you get closer to your competition, start pairing things up. Um, get your activation. Get your activation up, son. Something I probably could have done more of was weighted box jumps. Um, Looking back, that's something I would have liked to have done more of. I think those are pretty effective. Um, teaches the athlete to push hard. Whether it's holding dumbbells or whatever. Toddles up. Um, so yeah, keep it simple. Just uh Make sure their knees aren't caving in. Make sure they're not on the ground for like five seconds between every fucking jump. That's one thing that drives me fucking nuts is uh, when coaches put, uh, like they'll do hurdle hops, but the hurdles are so goddamn high that the athletes can't rebound off the ground in between them. They have to sit there and gather themselves and their knees cave in when they land. Um, that's really irritating. Or they have to double hop just to make it over the hurdle. You know, get off the ground quick. Any advice working squat for him? Hip bend before knee bend. Um, yeah, I saw... First, I'm going to say box squat. We'll help you with this. Um, not that you have to box squat exclusively. Um, but you almost, 
you almost want to break your <clears throat> your squat down into two movements so I'm gonna reach my butt back that's my first movement reach my butt back and start rolling my knees out until I feel like I can't do that anymore like right almost to the point where you feel like you're gonna fall over and then bend your knees and what you can do is do some warm-up sets where you break that down right so I'll reach my butt open my knees reach my butt open my knees until you almost feel like you're gonna fall over and then just bend your knees on that last little bit <clears throat> and you kind of break that down into two movements you know so reach and open reach and open and then stop it for a second and then bend your knees and that'll help keep your um, your shins perpendicular longer and then once you kind of get the hang of that um, then kind of make it into one more fluid movement <clears throat> um, if you throw a box in there it makes the whole thing easier it makes it easier to teach and easier to learn um, we used to with our athletes if I had coaches that were, you know, real adamant on free squatting, we'd have them do speed squats off our box. And then we'd pull the box out and drop their speed weight down by about 10% or so. And bring their feet in a little bit because we'd have them box squat wide. And then have them do some sets of like three to five on free squat. Um, and it worked pretty good. They they made a really good transition because the uh, it's kind of like the box kind of taught them to do it right, and then they knew they had some lighter weight on, so it wasn't such a big deal for them going without the box. Um, I'm sure you're a little more advanced uh, lifter than a lot of those kids, but that worked really well for them. So maybe for some beginners you're working with or whatever, uh, but. Yeah, man. Break if you break that down, or and just train off a box. That'll help help with that. It's, it's much easier to reach your ass back first and more if you know that box is back there. And then once you get the confidence, um, pull the box out. That's kind of what I do going into a meet. Um, <clears throat> for me, I'm not. I don't feel like I'm a good enough free squatter or lifter where I can just. Um, box spot exclusively going into a meet so what I'll start doing about a month out for my meet is I'll do my speed work in my uh, there's Haas there goes Haasenstein young man just totaled 2400 and squatted 1100 last weekend fucking strong um, so I'll, <clears throat> I'll start doing my speed work with uh, my suit bottoms on but no box and I'll just kind of go down till the suit locks up um, hold it in the bottom for a second and then come up fast so that's kind of what I do because I gotta kind of get a little practice free squatting um, that's what I'm doing with a lot of my clients uh, we'll do most of our heavy work Up to a box um, a lot of the speed work is free squat so they have some lighter weights and they can kind of think their way through it and then uh, we get closer to a meet we'll start doing some stuff nice I almost saw a car crash over here that was cool so yeah those are those are some things you can do to kind of help help with that butt back first I got gotcha. you um, RDLs are good you know it's fun it's uh, kind of go from <clears throat> I've been doing the last few weeks I've gotten away from pulling a little bit too much I think and uh, I did I think I did like a one or two pin pull out of the rack and my fucking upper hamstring just got wrecked from those 
and it just felt weak while I was doing it. So the next week I went in and I did, I went from pin one or pin two, that's on my speed pulls, but I did a snatch grip um, and I pause each rep and try to, so you're going from a dead stop on each rep and just try to like squeeze your ass and hamstrings as hard as you can to start that bar moving and try to move it fast too. And then do, uh, on the way down, do like a slow eccentric, like five or six seconds. And those wrecked me pretty good. Um, single leg back extension will get up in there really good. Be careful though, because they're kind of, they can be tough on your knees. You gotta make sure the pad on the back extension is right up in your hip crease. Like you don't wanna have the pad halfway down your quad because it'll fucking, it'll, it's tough on your knees. So try those, those are, those are pretty rough. Those lit me up pretty good the last few weeks. Um, you know, glute hams are always good. Try, try doing slow eccentrics. Just try that, take any movement you've been doing and put a fucking five or six second eccentric on it and it'll get you, it'll hit it different because most people don't do that very often, I think. Um, and another one, do a dumbbell, dumbbell stepped out RDLs where the one foot's out in front of the other and uh, your back foot is just on your toe, bend your knee a little bit and that back foot is just on the toe just for a little bit of balance. And it'll, those will get you too. Use a use two dumbbells, one dumbbell in each hand, because that's fucking stupid shit. Where you hold a ten pound dumbbell in one hand and you flip your leg out behind you isn't gonna stress your muscle at all. Don't do that stupid shit. I hate that fucking exercise. And it's not that I hate the exercise. I hate it because everyone fucking does it wrong. When if you're fucking doing a single leg RDL and you're fucking back is not even close to, their athlete's back is not even close to parallel to the ground, like they're twisting to the side, like a fucking plane that just got its wing shot off, you're not doing the fucking exercise right, and you should fucking coach your athletes up more, that shit drives me nuts, uh, I need to, we need to do single leg RDLs, because, uh, we need to prevent ACL tears, but I can't even coach this fucking one movement right, there, how's our, there's my rant, stick to the basics, I'm at Wegmans and I gotta go get some fucking groceries. So.